Of our newly elected leadership, it has indeed been an exciting journey to witness throughout the weekend. South Africa, I know it has been exciting for you to witness yeah. at home. So thank you to all the delegates who have participated for voting the newly elected leadership into their positions. Thank you to the presiding officers for the stellar officiation yeah. that you've done throughout the weekend. It has been amazing. And most importantly, thank you to our staff members across South Africa. Definitely today wouldn't have been the success that it it is without your commitment, without your talents. So thank you. And once more, South Africa, Democrats at home for painting the timelines blue, for tuning in. We thank you. So right now, joining us here in studio to, to catch up on what we've been through throughout the weekend, we're joined by one of our national spokespersons, Abudi Salimaladzi. Abudi Huna. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you for joining us here. So tell us yeah. where, where to from here. Well, the first immediate task now will be for the newly elected leader of the party, John Stian Hazen, to deliver his acceptance speech from the Tropicana Hotel. So we'll be crossing over there shortly. Yeah. But most importantly, Congress will also come to an official close. Mm -hmm. But it's been an incredible experience throughout this weekend, mm -hmm. seeing the work that has gone into preparing for the largest virtual political gathering in South Africa. Yeah. From all the staff in the background that were involved in the preparatory work, to the political leadership of the party that supported them and to every single delegate who participated and made sure that this conference ran smoothly and to the media that helped to cover this conference so that we can take it to the homes of South Africans. Yeah, for sure. And for those of uh, our visitors who may have just joined us now, our viewers out there, uh, we have those results of the elections yeah. for the leadership positions. I will just run through them again quickly yeah. in case yeah. you missed them. The Federal Finance Chairperson, Dr. Dion George. Oh, well done. The Deputy Federal Chairperson, there's three positions there. Yeah. The third position, Jacques Smollett. Oh, yeah. The second position, <laughs> Anton Bradell. Anton Bradell. And, and the first there. position, Rifil Wenseke. Well Allah. done to them. Allah. The federal chairperson, we've seen him this weekend. We've seen him working yeah. really hard yeah. all, all day as well. Dr. Ivan uh, Mayer, well yeah. done to Dr. Dr. Ivan Dr. Mayer. Mayer. Then we have two deputy chairperson of the federal council positions. Yeah. And that will be filled by James Masangu and Thomas Walters. Walters. Well yeah. done, gentlemen. Of course, the, cha the chairperson of the federal council was taken by Helen Ziller. Well done, oh, Helen Ziller. Oh, 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 then, of course, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone's waiting to hear, uh, the federal leader of yeah. the Democratic yeah. Alliance, yeah. elected at this virtual Congress, John, John Steele. 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 Oh, 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 oh. I think South Africa, as Democrats, we are more confident than ever that indeed we are moving as a democratic, as the Democratic Alliance. We are indeed proud of our leader. We're sure that he's fit for purpose and he can lead the party forward, but also can lead South Africa to greater heights. But for those of you at home who are wondering, who is John Steinhazen? John Steinhazen comes from the beautiful province of KwaZulu Natal. He has been a public representative of the Democratic Alliance for over 20 years, and throughout these 20 years he's been great he started off as a counselor in the city of Etiquini at the age of 22 then and that's really something that's great to celebrate as well he served as the KwaZulu Natal provincial leader he's also served as the caucus leader of the KwaZulu Natal um, uh, uh, caucus in the provincial legislature of of KZN and most of South Africa may know him as the chief whip of the yeah. official opposition in the National Assembly a job that he's executed with great excellence very witty very whippy indeed it's been uh, absolutely amazing to witness that and after that he before this today has been our interim federal leader until this very moment right now where he has been elected as the federal leader no. of the democratic alliance john bully gate <laughs> indeed the gates indeed. are open as exciting as this is overwhelming indeed i think it's it's, it's a vibe across south africa Tell us what can we expect from the Democratic Alliance moving forward? Well, moving forward, you know, we need to take our offer to every ward in South Africa, to every community in South Africa, so that we can share the vision that John will outline in his acceptance speech, yeah. but also our offers to some of the challenges that confront our country, mm -hmm. so that South Africans can see the ideas that we have, the solutions that we have, yeah. because we are very determined to be the organization and the government that brings the real change and the real hope that our country needs. So it will be going 
going externally now, going throughout all of South Africa to present our vision to every single community in our country yeah. that will be able to measure and test our ideas because we believe we've got the best ideas yeah. that shows us we are the only credible alternative to the current government. Indeed, it is exciting. Touch, let's go. The ground is fertile as the Democratic Alliance. We are more confident than ever that we'll be able to reach those streets. It's going to be exciting. Richard? Robo? Yes. Sorry? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting news coming in from the producer that we are now okay. we're going live oh. to Durban okay. for the speech from the new federal leader of the Democratic Alliance, uh -huh. Mr. John Steenhuizen. <laughs> Democrats, fellow South Africans, I couldn't think of a more fitting place from me to be speaking with you today than this beautiful city of Etekweni. 21 years ago, I made my way up the steps of the Durban City Hall for the very first time as one of the city's youngest ever elected councillors. Back then, as today, many people ask me why I decided to go into politics. The answer I give today is the exact one I gave all those years ago. Because I love my party and I love my country. I've traveled a long road with many of you in the DA. I fought to fix potholes when I was a councillor. I exposed corruption when I was a member of the KwaZulu-Natal legislature. I've held presidents accountable as a member of parliament. But never in my wildest imagination did I think that one day I would be a leader of this great party of ours. When I first became a DP activist at the age of around 19, I did so because I knew it was a party with a proud history of fighting to give power to the people of South Africa. A party that waged a lone battle in Parliament against the evil apartheid regime. A party that was instrumental in drafting our nation's liberal democratic constitution. A party that grew from a handful of seats in Parliament to become the official opposition. In the years since, the DA has grown to become a party that governs cities and municipalities across the country, as well as a province. And it is a party that will one day be the core of a national government that's going to unlock the boundless potential of each and every South African and of our country. I want to say thank you to each and every delegate and to every member of my campaign team across the length and breadth of the country for the enormous trust you've placed in me. I am deeply, deeply humbled by your support. I also want to thank my wife, Terry, and my three beautiful daughters who are here today, Ashley, Caroline, and Olivia, as well as my family for being here today. I know that all of you have sacrificed so much for me to be able to pursue my dream of serving South Africa. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'd also like to give gratitude to my colleague in this leadership race. In Bali, sure, you didn't make this an easy race. <laughs> You fought me every step of the way, and you never gave up. And in doing so, I think you've helped to entrench a proud democratic tradition in our party. That we don't anoint leaders, we elect them.
We choose our leaders on the basis of their ideas, the content of their character, and their potential to lead our party into new territory. And in Bali, long may this democratic tradition continue in our party. I did not run to become the leader of this party for its own sake. I'm here today because I want to take the DA to greater heights and a fight for our country where each and every citizen has the power to build a dignified life. Today I stand before you even more determined and more energized than I was when I first climbed the steps of the Durban City Hall 21 years ago. The task ahead of us will not be an easy one. Our country is in serious trouble and, colleagues, the stakes have never been higher. When I look around me, I see despair and desperation, poverty and hunger. I see politicians blaming each other all the time for what's gone wrong while our people suffer. And all this is happening despite the fact that the vast majority of South Africans are warm-hearted, honest and hard-working people just trying to build a future for their families. We're not a nation of thieves and criminals beset on destroying our country. And yet, each and every one of us is exposed to thievery, criminality and decline on a daily basis. As we journey through life, many of us no longer lift our heads to the horizon because we're too scared about what we see waiting for us in the future. How is it that this nation of hard-working and peace-loving people knows neither prosperity nor peace? The people of South Africa thought that democracy would put them in charge, that the people would govern. All power to the people was the rallying cry. Instead, people now feel further and further away from where power lies. Over the past quarter of a century, you and our fellow citizens have been robbed of our destiny, our dreams held hostage to bureaucrats and central planners. Just think of any problem you encounter in your daily life. At the root of it, you will find a state that is utterly incapable and corrupt, yet absolutely hell-bent on telling you what to do. People don't have electricity in their homes because government insists on a state monopoly for power generation. People are poor because government crushes entrepreneurship, growth and job creation. Excessive state control is the reason why people can no longer take the train to work and why government would rather spend the little bit of tax money that's left to fund an airline that we do not need. corrupting our state. In every domain of your life, the incapable state is in the way of you getting ahead. And what is government's solution to the problems caused by excessive state control? Their solution is even more state control. Because the more the central planners fail, the more furiously the central planners plan. And so we face the prospect of the state taking away private property. In the future, you may no, no longer be able to take out private medical insurance. And there is a very real fear that the pension that you've spent your lifetime saving for will be taken away from you. No longer content with controlling you, the government now wants to own you. They're coming for your home, they're coming for your health, and they're coming for your savings. Now the good news is that the people of South Africa are starting to reject state control. People don't want to live a life of dependency on a failing and corrupt state. People are tired of being told what to do by rulers who only look out for themselves. People want to stand on their own two feet as self-reliant, autonomous human beings. They want power and freedom to make their own choices and build a life they value. This is what the DA will offer under my leadership. People power, not state power. We're going to fight to give power and opportunities to every law-abiding, honest, 
and hardworking citizen, regardless of their background, to build a life that they value. As the DA's constitution so eloquently puts it, our party is uniquely founded on faith in the South African people. People have sometimes had endless debates about the meaning of liberalism in today's world. But for me, liberalism in its purest form is a commitment to give power to the people so that they can decide for themselves how to build lives of value. Yeah. Yeah. At the heart of this, this means building a capable state that protects citizens from harms like violent crime, that delivers quality education and healthcare, and other services that all people need to unlock the opportunity that lies within. We're going to take power away from the state and put it in the hands of the people where it rightfully belongs. The one thing that unites South Africans above all else is the desire to determine one's own destiny. We have many problems in this country, but the people of South Africa are not one of them. There is nothing wrong with South Africa that cannot be fixed with everything that is good about South Africans. From the Uber driver in Soweto to the nurse in Mtata and the farmer in Fredendal, people yearn for a government that provides things like good schools, clean drinking water, a sustainable safety net for the vulnerable, as well as a reliable electricity supply so they can pursue their own life's dreams. They want a leg up from a caring and effective government, not handouts from the failing state. And if you want proof of just how committed this reinvigorated DA is to fighting on the side of the people rather than the state, look no further than the way we have fought for you during this lockdown crisis. When the national government tried to make it impossible for you to earn a living, while their cadres embarked on a massive looting spree, the DA stood alone in defense of the people. We were the first to reject the brutal hard lockdown. We fought for justice for Collins Causa and dozens of other citizens brutalized and killed by the state. And we forced the state to keep the soup kitchens open and allow hungry children to be fed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the Western Cape, we built hospitals of hope while other provinces sent people to die in hospitals of horror. Yeah. During the lockdown crisis, the DA offered practical and constructive alternatives, which would have saved countless people from unnecessary suffering. In the midst of this greatest crisis that has faced our country in a generation, the DA has revealed that our character is stronger than ever before. That we can be a powerful force for positive change when we implement solutions based on our principles. But I must also be frank with you. We have made mistakes. There were moments in our recent past when the DA looked for popular shortcuts and failed to offer clear solutions to the decline caused by state control. There have been times when the DA failed to be a dependable ally in the people's fight for power. And for a while, we've lost sight of who we were and what we offer. Clear, principled, and decisive leadership. Fortunately, mistakes don't have to be fatal, provided we learn the lessons from them. And over this past year, we've embarked on an exciting journey of introspection to fix that which was broken within our party precisely because we had the courage to face up to our own mistakes, I can tell you today that the days of breaking trust with South Africans are well and truly over. <laughs> Under my leadership, the DA will never again turn our back on our core principles. We are a liberal party committed to non-racialism, a social market economy, and a capable state that empowers citizens and cares for the vulnerable. We have always been at our strongest and achieved our best results when we stood strong on these principles. Our task now 
is to show how our policies can lift 13 million people out of unemployment and 30 million people out of poverty. We are ready to show South Africa that another way is possible. A better future beckons on the horizon under a DA government that will replace state control with people power. A future that's marked by a world-class service delivery in the towns and cities where we govern. Schools staffed by dedicated professionals who unleash and unlock the potential in every one of their students. Hospitals that heal the sick and care for the most vulnerable members of society. A rapidly growing economy that creates millions of jobs because it is owned and controlled by the hardworking people of our country. And empowerment that works for the 30 million impoverished people rather than for this predatory elite. Going forward, we will evaluate every decision on the basis of a single question. Does it give more power to politicians and bureaucrats, or does it give more power to people? Measuring every decision against this metric, and always choosing to empower the people rather than the state, holds the key to fixing South Africa. The DA also has a clear roadmap for South Africa's journey towards this new horizon of hope. Together, we must build a new majority in South African politics, with the DA at the heart of governments across the length and breadth of this beautiful country. Democrats, it can be done. Just look at the city of Chwane, where just two days ago we took back control. Let's give them a big round. <laughs> As a result of that, the capital city is, of South Africa is once again governed by the DA. Aside from giving us an opportunity to restore good governance in our country's capital, our most recent victory in China offers two very important lessons for our road ahead. The first is that our opponents will stop at nothing to undermine our fight for people power. Terrified by the prospect of losing control, the Gauteng provincial government used every dirty trick in the book to try and prevent the DA from delivering for the people of Chwane. The second lesson is that there are simply no shortcuts to victory. It's only because we diligently fought the unconstitutional power grab in the courts for almost a year that we are now able to again take charge and bring change to the residents of Chwane. If we resolutely stick to our principles, as we've recently done in Chwane, there is a clear path to victory for the DA and for the people power in South Africa. In addition to the dozens of municipalities where we already deliver world-class services as a party of government, another two dozen could have DA-led councils after the 2021 elections. Five of them are in Gauteng, 11 are in the Northern Cape, and three are in the Eastern Cape. We're also ready to unleash all of our firepower in the fight to get outright majorities in cities like Chwane, Nelson Mandela Bay. A clear DA majority that avoids the need for coalitions is the best way to protect these metros from underhanded takeovers that disrupt and undermine service delivery. By waging a principled fight for people power, we will reignite momentum and sweep the ANC out of power. We've done it many times before, in Cape Town, in Midvale, in Western Cape, and in Chwane. If we show people that we are the party of people power, we can do it again. And this time, Democrats, we can do it all across South Africa. Today, the DA, alongside millions of ordinary South Africans, takes the first step on our journey towards a horizon of hope, where power lies with the people, not with the corrupt and incapable state. Now, we know that the voyage will not be an easy one. There will be plenty of obstacles and battles, as well as mirages along the way. But we also know that with each step we take forward, decline will be further behind us and hope will be nearer than ever. 
I know that many of you are afraid of what the future holds. We can all feel the decline created by decades of ever-expanding state control. I know that many South Africans are so scared that they stare only at the ground in front of them, just trying to put one foot in front of another. But I stand before you today as the leader of a revitalized democratic alliance to give you reason to again lift your eyes up from the ground. You are no longer alone. <laughs> History has shown us that when hardworking and peace-loving South Africans from all backgrounds overcome our differences to unite in the quest for people power, there is no limit to what we can achieve as a nation. Together, the DA and the people of this country can take power back from the corrupt and capable state that stole it away from us in the first place. And it doesn't matter which part of the country you come from, what language you speak, what background you have, what God you worship, or what community you belong to. If you want to live in a country where you have the security and build opportunities to live a life of value for you and your family, you have a home in our DA. If you've been stuck in the unemployment queue for years, you have a home in our DA. If you're tired of corrupt politicians who've stolen your future and that of your children, you have a home in our DA. And if you want your children to receive a quality education, you have a home in our DA. And if you're tired of a state that spends more on VIP security for politicians than on protecting the farmers who feed us all, you have a home in our DA. Yeah. Democrats, we can win this battle to take power back from the state if as many people as possible rally to this cause. And our first opportunity to begin wresting power away from those who seek to control us will come in less than one year from today during the 2021 local government elections. That is why I'm asking you to get out there and register to vote DA in your local municipality. Talk to your friends and relatives who've given up on our country about the DA's vision for people power over state control. Spread the word that the days of indecision and mixed messaging are well and truly over and that our country can be fixed if we elect a courageous DA government that will give power back to the people. <laughs> From this first step we take together today and during every mile of the journey that lies ahead, the DA proudly walks side by side with the people of this country. Not a day longer will you have to walk with your shoulders slumped because now the DA walks alongside you, the people of South Africa, with our chins held high and our eyes focused, not on the many perils that confront us today, but on that horizon of hope that beckons tomorrow. That's where we're going, Democrats. That's where we're taking South Africa. That's the future we need. That journey starts today. Yeah.